This episode is sponsored by Will Gregg, owner of KME Auto Cosmetics, where you get more than you expect for less than you thought, and it's not by accident. You can locate KME 380 Neely Street, Sumter, South Carolina. Also, you can make contact with the owner of Will Gregg at 803-840-8190. Train so hard university, where it's just not a movement, it's a lifestyle. You can contact myself, Excalibur Miller, on Facebook, on my Instagram, the Miller Experience, or you contact my brother T Mill on Facebook or on Instagram, Prodigal Son36. Interested in being a sponsor for Shop Talk or the Miller Experience, you can contact myself, Ernest Miller, at 803-565-9752. Or you can hit me up on my email at eaenestmiller83 at gmail.com. Also make contact with my producer, Victor Wesley of Vic West Production. His telephone number is 803-225-0021. Also his email address is vicwestp at gmail.com. And should form Death Row Records. Did they come to you first for security, or how did that go about? You become a security for Death Row. No, no, no. I didn't come around till ninety, the end of ninety four, beginning of ninety five. Uh, however, I did work a couple of sets in Compton, like off duty work for like video shoots, and when they sing, uh, they did a scene at a liquor store for the opening of a concert and stuff like that, they would reach out to me and and uh, get some security just to work kind of under the table and stuff like that. But my relationship was always with Shug. To this day, it's still just the connection with me and Shug. And that's why they pretty much don't mess with me anymore because of my loyalty to Shug versus um, I was a Shug guy. Never was a Dre or a Snoop guy, but supply security for them, but only because of being Shug guy and recommendation of Shug. And you know, after that big lawsuit that they got, uh, that big lawsuit that they got from uh, having an unarmed or unauthorized uh, bodyguard slash security guard. Uh, shoot you know the thing was with snoop where they uh got off the murder case you still got criminal lab not you have civil liability which people don't understand which can hurt you more you know in your pockets than then you know then this because you beat it criminally they still had some civil liability and where they probably wouldn't have to pay that money if they had legit Guys or guy, I'm not saying he wasn't legit because Malik was a good dude and I guess he did what he was supposed to have done. But uh, it doesn't look good when you go take a, a guy like that before the court of a jury. Um, it makes it look like maybe if he was trained better or had more training, you might have handled it a different way. You might have left versus reacting like that or talk to your client into leaving, you know, you know how attorneys can make Turn stuff. Around. Switch it around on you. Yeah. Once you get, once you said in that courthouse and get in that, in that chair, boy, you'd be like, 
<laughs> you need like a Monday back quarterback. Yeah. Once you get Monday back quarterback, man, I hate Monday back quarterback because <laughs> you forget about, man, okay, yeah, you're right, but I reacted. I did this or I did that. A Monday back quarterback is a mother, right? Heck yeah. When did you actually start your um your security business? I still I hired my company uh, my company actually in ninety the end of ninety five. What I did was uh I, I subcontracted because I had to go and get my license and go through all that testing and all that to get my PPO. That's what they call it out here in California, a private patrol operator license. Took me until about the end of 95 to get, get mine, but I was using a a company uh, called Code 4, and I would just supervise that guy's, uh, he was a reserve police officer from uh, from Compton, and he would allow me to supervise and use his company. But as I saw all the money that I was giving him, and plus by then, um, I was about ready to do a medical retirement, because I messed up my ankle on an on-duty traffic accident and where it was kind of hard and plus I wanted to get out there that I was making money and I, I was losing money that I couldn't make because I was had to work and more so the scrutiny that was starting to come up on, come on me for hanging in association with these so-called gang members or rap guys and stuff like that. Uh, the other boys in blue didn't like that. And so I was getting threatened to get fired weekly. <laughs> weekly, bro. Weekly. So I, I, from, from not, the outside, not, monthly, not yearly, weekly. <laughs> from, from the outside looking in, uh, Death Row looked like a gangbanger's frat house. What was it really like? Uh, well, you had gang members around. Shug was, was big on hiring and giving people a chance. And so you had them around, but most of those dudes just wanted to work, man. Uh, they wanted to do whatever it took to, to get work and, and to make to make an honest dollar. Nobody wanted to go back to jail. And so if you can make an honest dollar, man, you're going to try. But if that money ain't coming in right or the way you, you envision or want it to come in, then it's just in you, so they're going to do some stupid things which started happening. But if those dudes was making that money and, and when everybody was getting taken care of, like LeBron, you know, take care of, you know, set up his four or five guys and say, okay, I can't take care. And that's what Sugar problem was. He was trying to take care of too many of them. But I believe when you take care of, man, I love how LeBron did that. You four niggas, y'all going to be rich like me. Or, well, not like me, but y'all going to be okay. Y'all going to yeah. be okay, yeah. yeah. Y'all going to be okay. I don't put y'all in positions. This is your strength. You're going to work on this. This is your strength. You're going to work with Maverick. This is you do movies. Rich, you want to do sports agent. You know how they put those guys in place. Uh, that would have been great. And, you know, she'll try that. You know, he put me in place. He was like, all right, Rich, you know, police work and all that. You open up a security company and you do this. And he was trying, but he didn't do it enough. And, and um, yeah, so that's why it appeared the guys were just hanging around and and and, and, and game members. But these were just dudes that just wanted a, a honest dollar, a car. Of course, you like that exposure, that life we were living. I mean, we were sitting on fifty yard line at Super Bowl games. We were staying in the fourth. You ain't never slept in on a four season mattress. You need to try it once in your life. <laughs> yeah. On the hotels in the four seasons to sleep on no mattress, you know. So you very rarely get the experience that that's something I would have never done in life if I didn't have that experience. And so, um, so they like that, even though they wasn't able to get the little money. But once the money started getting cut off, that's when all the 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 inner fightings and all of that started to happen among uh, everybody because of jealousy, just because of uh, how something unfortunately just in us, man. And I think that comes from the house nigga to the, the light-skinned nigga to the dark nigga days that's, that's in us as a culture. Yeah. Uh, how how we get played against each other. Yes, yes. And, uh, it's unfortunate. 
but it's a reality. Yeah. Now, how is how it was portrayed, like in Straight Outta Compton, the amount of, of chaos, and Dr. Dre just putting his hands on people, and yeah, the Dre dog the dog people. fighting in the. the I'm surprised uh, him being a part of the show that he did that because that wasn't Dre personality. Mm-hmm. Dre is a a artist. Yeah. What I mean by that is he really just about his music and his crowd. Now, Dre talk a little here. He love his red bones and his light-skinned women. Yeah. You know, he get that gay rap, but Dre wasn't gay, gay. Dre, Dre, Dre love, always had a pretty red bone around. Okay. Every time I saw him, he had a mixed chick or a, a red bone around. And so, uh, but Dre wasn't that type of dude. Uh, why he put that in the show, I don't know. Or allow that to be in the show, maybe. But Hollywood, I know, make you do stuff like that. Because my favorite movie to this day uh, was my favorite movie until the end. And I knew Hollywood made them do that. It was that song, with that, that movie with, uh, I think it was Paid in Full, with, with Benny Siegel in there, where they was like, Lay down or sit down or oh, get down. Oh, stay proper. Stay proper. Stay proper. Stay proper. Yeah, stay proper. And then what they do at the end. Had those niggas come in there with guns and shoot up the courthouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, why did he mess up yeah. this movie like that? That was a great movie, but I know Hollywood make you do stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's to my point. Yeah, and okay. I think Hollywood made, made them do a lot of stuff that that, that wasn't true. But, so yeah. it really wasn't like chaos going on? It was chaos. It was mm-hmm. chaos issues when it came up. Mm-hmm. Okay. It wasn't like they were just walking around looking for chaos. Gotcha, okay, gotcha. but gotcha. but but when things come up, they felt they had to deal with it, and that's what Suge job. And so Suge always got every case. If you ever really research on Suge, every case that Suge got in trouble for was going to bat for somebody else. Yeah, or somebody did like the the one that he got two strikes for uh, with the boys uh, from New York. Uh, the Stanley Brothers. It was just all because he told him, get off the phone. Mm-hmm. He just said, get off the phone. Nigga, fuck you, this Dre shit. Who are you? It wasn't like he was going out and looking for problems. Yeah. This dude, you know, not knowing who he was and confronted him and, and called him one. Oh, so that's how, it actually, that's how it actually went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just... He came in, there was some dudes from New York, they was on the phone. Because back then, man, people don't know. Business phones, they forget, you know, the ones that that's old and the ones that's too young never knew. Telephone bills was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Especially calling from a business. Yeah. And Dick Griffey was on his butt, you know, at a recording studio, too, about the phone bill. So he was having five, six thousand dollars phone bills and that, you know, that's just crazy. And so Dick Griffey was like, man, you, your people better stop using phones. So he was getting heat about the phone, but he wasn't really, you know, okay, all right, all right, I'm forcing. So he walks up and, and walks in the studio, just coming from court on another case. Mm-hmm. For most people know, in a suit. Okay. And, and, and he walks in the studio and the dudes are on the phone and the Stanley brothers and they were on the phone and and he tell them to get off the phone. But he keep walking. You know, hey, y'all get off the phone, y'all can't. And so now he go in, the, in his office and he look on the cameras and see they still on the phone. So now wow. he got to come and confront them. And then that's how he gets confronted that wildly. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. See, the media try to make it seem like Suge just this crazy dude, power, wow. power hungry. I no. want you. Chug always like I, I tell I tell everybody. If I really research his cases, everything that boy got in trouble for, he was always going to try to defend or or be captain save a hold of somebody else, another <laughs> man. Because you know. they always came to him. Yeah. I, y'all wouldn't believe the amount of phone calls this man done got. I remember DJ Pool. We get threatened by lots of people. Reggie, I need you to go put some security on. Oh, DJ Poo at the studio because niggas threatened to come up there and beat him up. Uh, Damon Thomas, what? Reggie, I need you to put security on him because that's the guy that's married to Kim Kardashian. Was I need you to put security on him because of this. 
it was always people coming to him for help. And then it seemed that it always backfired or turned on him. And, but I guess that's what he feels his value was. Did Dre and Suge have a strong relationship in the beginning? I know towards the oh. end it kind of backfired, but. Now they had a great relationship for what I knew, but you gotta remember, I didn't come around until the end of 94, 95. By then, Dre was, he was pretty much on house arrest uh, for some incidents he had. Uh, so he wasn't around as much at the studio and stuff like that. But I always saw them to be cordial and respectful towards each other. Uh, it was mainly just the drama. Like I said, Dre wasn't built like that. Dre wasn't about that. And that life, uh, he just got tired of. You remember, y'all gotta remember Dre started talking about he wasn't doing rap no more. I mean, gangster rap no more. He wanted to do jazz. He wanted, you know, change his whole style of music and, 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 and you know, he was changing up on how he wanted to be. That's yeah. when he did that ballroom, uh, who been there, who done yeah. that. Done that video, yeah. I was just thinking about that, yeah. yeah. You know, so Dre was really, you know, he had a, 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 a you know, a new family and, you know, a, a white woman. She, she, I got an interview up on Bomb First right now where he talking about he came to him and said he wanted to be white. <laughs> 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 you know, which I think she was capping, but the young people were capping. But uh, I think she was BSing on that. But 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 he said that, I'm talking about she, but that's really what Dre was kind of telling him. And if you listen to what he was saying in 95, 96, you got to kind of believe it. You got to kind of believe it. But, okay, that's growth. That's growth. Dre had been in trouble. He was drinking heavily at one point. He had got that DUI, well, reckless. They called it a wet reckless. They ended up dropping down to when he was driving his Tesla Rosa fast down, you know, sunset. And the incident with D. Barnes where he got tired and he was probably like me. Don't want to go back to that federal or go back to jail. Like me, you can't get me to do nothing wrong because I don't want to go back in a federal penitentiary. I don't want to go back in a state penitentiary. I don't want to go to a jail. Gonna but get you know, that. once you go there, some people just ain't built for it and don't want to go back. And I think that's, Dre got a little taste of that being on house arrest and didn't like it and wanted to change. And man, can you fault a man for that? Nah, I can't. We do, stupidly, but should we? Not me at being 55 years of age now. I don't, I don't fault him at all. I get it, bro. At that time, you know, in the 20s, guys really, really didn't see it. They just thought he was switching up. But when you get older and start to evolve, yeah. you see why he made that decision. Yeah, Man, God talked to some of us at certain times. He don't talk to us all at the same time, but he'd be like, all right, Reggie, you need to do this. And we don't know if Dre had that conversation, you know, with God. His mama, somebody. Well, he wanted to change. So. Yeah. What made Suge uh, bail Tupac out and bring him to death row? What was it about Tupac that Suge really wanted him to come to death row? The opportunity. And uh, yeah, just sold two million records uh, with me against the world. Pac reached out and had his girl, his wife at the time, reach out to Suge. Uh, Suge saw an opportunity. Whoever knew. See, most people think people, everybody knew about appeal bonds. I know about a pill bond before you go to jail or, or, or civilly or something like that. But I know you can get out of a prison on a pill bond. Nobody knew that. And so once they learned about that and, you know, Park researched and found out that it was a possibility and only needed a million and a half dollars, a million point four to death row back in 95, 96, that was nothing to, 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 uh, to come up with. And so when he saw the and it was people that had the money. But what Shug had that most people didn't have was that motherfucking white boy, David Kenner. Yeah. And David Kenner was that key to making that happen. Shug not getting, uh, uh, you know, Shug getting parked out. But that's all that happened. 
uh, opportunity. You know, once you talk to people and they say, hey, man, because Pac hated it in there. He was having it hard. He was having it rough in there. And uh, so I'm sure once he's talking to Shug and Shug saw it in his eyes, like, oh, I got to help this dude. That's what was what your I, first impression of Tupac when he stepped in death row? Uh, you know, of course you knew of his songs. You know, I get around and this and that and all of that. I didn't think he was going to be a bigger a bigger star than what Snoop was and all of that. So it ain't like our, our limos got better because Tupac came around. We were still riding around in the same limos. We were still doing the same stuff. So it ain't like our money changed or anything like that. But Tupac did come home and and and, and, and do do what he was supposed to do and and hit and hit a, a superstar status. But when you said when he first came on, so that's why I'm, you know phrasing it like that. So he was just another dude that we was gonna try to get out there and put out. Did you think it was a good idea beforehand to to get him? Like I said, I didn't have opinion either way uh, at that at that point. Uh, I didn't have an opinion. Who knows now? You know, I'm one of those that believe all our dates is wrote down. God knows, you know, when we all going to die. So I don't care where Pac was or whatever. I believe that he was going to die on September the 13th, 1996, when he came out of his mama womb. That God knew that. That's, that's what my Bible and my, my teaching is. Uh, he said the only way we can uh, lose lose days off our life is by uh, striking our parents, being disobedient towards our parents. Is uh, Then we lose days off our life. But, uh, so I said that to say, you know, yeah, I wish he would have stayed in prison if I knew that for sure he was going to still be alive. Sure, he does as well. But that don't mean he wouldn't have died in prison or or some other little way if you believe that teaching. And so uh, if I knew he was going to die like he did, then uh, yeah, I would have loved for him to stay in prison. But uh, if he was going to die on September 96 in prison, and then he didn't come home and being able to do all those things he achieved in that 11 months. And I'm glad he got a chance or the opportunity to do those. You know, he, he did about, what, six or seven music videos that we all can still listen to and live. About 120 to 100 songs that we all can still enjoy and listen to. Uh, two movies. Probably about 10 good videos. And he got to spend time with friends and families and make some new friends and family. So, I don't know. That's a hard question to, to say based on our religious beliefs. Pac and Nas ever worked out this situation? I, I heard that he was, him and Nas were able to come to a, an agreement at a meeting. He was going to take out, what song was that on the Machiavelli? Against the All Against Odds. All Odds. He was going to take that verse out with him this and Nas, did them guys ever consult each other and be able to come to agreement and squash the beef? Yeah, they 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 shook it out, hugged, and talked about doing music and doing work together the following week or two. And so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, I know that they were going to try, that, that, you know, that they did work it out. They had, came to a mutual agreement that day where the people would have gotten their ears or got into them after the incident, who knows? You know how people get in our ears afterwards, oh, nigga, you crazy for doing that, or oh, he said this about you, I didn't tell you he said this, or he was doing that, or he was faking, or, you know, so who knows if all that would happen. But from what I saw and observed that night, it was all good after those dudes uh, embraced and gave each other that. So knowing that Pac was planning on I guess removing some of the the shots that he took towards Nas. Why was against all I still put out? 
we mess up. Uh, it was done. Sugar and I, and, and, well, I always take the blame, but the, 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 the album was put out and uh, Sugar didn't tell us that it was already, you know, it was put out and put together just the way we feel Park wanted stuff put out. But yeah, we dropped the ball. Uh, we 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 should have probably removed that song or took that verse off. Uh, but who would you put into it? You know, Pac wasn't with us any any longer. You know, this only happened. The meeting only happened what four? It happened on that Monday or Sunday, whenever the MTV Music was, and we know he got shot and died that that Saturday. Okay. So it just wasn't time for Pac to do it because uh, he shot Viddy. He shot the the. Uh, he had to do some remaking, some makeup shots on uh, the video. Uh, Toss it up. That he worked on on Friday and and, uh, and Thursday. I don't know what he did Tuesday or Wednesday, but well, I think he was in the studio. I don't know that business. I wasn't into the the game then. I was just straight security then, uh, or had the guys you know supply security to the company then, but. Yeah, I'm sure Park. That's one thing that Park might be disappointed that uh, that that verse wasn't taken out. But Nas don't seem to be tripping about it. He, he seems to, you know, I never we'll get heard to that later on one of his songs. I don't think you was you, you was you was too fond about it. But we we get to that one later. Well, um, I, he probably wasn't fond about it that it was made or that he felt yeah. that way. But how, that it came out. Yeah, I don't know. Never heard. What was Puffy and Suge relationship like? It was I saw a video with Keefy D stating that Puffy paid him a significant amount of money to assassinate Suge. So what were their relationship really like? At one time it was great. Where did it go um, south? At one time it was great. They had a great relationship, a working relationship. Suge picked him up from the airport a few times and, and when he came into LA and stuff. Look. Suge had opened up this club and Biggie was hot and Suge had wanted him to come and perform at Club 662 in Vegas. This was before Pac was, was, was coming or we had even thought about Pac coming to death row. This was one of the fights in like probably March of 95 or something like that. And Suge wanted Pac, uh, Biggie to, uh, to come and, uh, perform at the Club 662 because Biggie was hot. Everybody knows 94, 95 was Biggie years. Puffy wanted the the door. You know, all the money to come at the door. And Suge being like, hey, I done let you sample. They didn't have Death Row catalog on on his album. And me and you supposed to be boys, you know, you know, one hand take care of another. And now you, you know, I fly y'all in, get y'all, get y'all, you know, take care of your expenses and, or whatever. But you want the door? I'm just trying to get this 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 club off the ground. You know, I got artists. I just trying to give them something good. But you know, we're supposed to look out for each other. Puff wants the door, so she got a bad taste in his mouth. But we're like, okay, fuck you, nigga. You know. Yeah. But now he meet with Pop, and it started up in about July. Of ninety five, and uh, by August the sixth, that was the day of the Source Awards of ninety five. He know Pac coming to Death Row now. We got confirmation that he gonna get out on the pill bond and everything in the work. Just now, letting the attorneys do what they gotta do, get him out. And so, Sugar was like. And Pac was like, man, I'm telling you, I'm coming home, I'm destroying them. I I believe, you know, yeah, I know how the penitentiary walls talk. Yeah. I, hear I know niggas on, in, the, in, in prison know stuff before people on the streets. Yep. And so he was <laughs> hearing all the allegations that that they, uh, you know, that they had something to do with it. And his mind playing tricks on him, paranoia, not trusting nobody. And he really felt that Big and, and Puff knew something about what happened. You know, that's why he always said, nigga, you supposed to be the king of New York. King of New York, you supposed to know what's going on. I heard and be reporting to me 
who did this to me, meaning, you know, the shooting at the quad studio. And so all of this going through Park here. So now he's like, I'm coming home. I won't, I'll be at war with bad boys. This I'm, I'm destroying them as a record label, as a crew, everything. She's like, all right, I'm riding with you, Park. But that's how she is. That's why the statement was made at the Source Awards. Letting them know, all right, we ain't cool no more. We ride with Pop. Most people don't know in one of those cells, there was a picture, a yeah. big old poster picture of Pop sitting in the cell. So let everybody know Pop's a death row inmate now. And that's where it goes from there. So walk us through that night, that fatal night, Mike Tyson fight. So walk us through it. On why it happened with the fight with Orlando Anderson. Walk us through that that fatal night, man. Um, the fight, the shooting, everything. What was your thought process? Were you there? If you wasn't there, what what did you think? What was going through your head? What was Suge talking about? What was Suge mind frame at that moment? You talking about after the shooting now, right? After the shooting, correct. After the shooting, everybody pissed. They're like, what the hell? Because you gotta remember, we was untouchable, Death Row. We were telling you that we running around talking about we untouchable now. And uh, everybody was disappointed and pissed, of course. You know, as being security was taking some, you know, some of the heat, like, well, what's going on? Oh, why this happened? You know, why you got? It was a blur, man. I tell you, that was one of the worst weeks of my life. It was a blur. I've never been asked that question, but uh stressful now we're trying to protect him now you got candy stripes people dressing up you know reporters dressing up like candy stripes trying to come up there take pictures and we had a dandy beat one of these little white girls out dressed up like a a candy stripe that, that got up you know try to get up there and was taking pictures and take the you know camera for her so now you and it's definitely a, a, a some type of security mode yeah, people up there calling and threatening, you know, at the hospital and stuff like that. So now you're on, you're on lookout. And then you have, you know, niggas back in the neighborhood ready to retaliate. And so now you're getting here and I'm getting calls from Pops who's over the game unit and stuff in Compton. I'm like, what's going on? These niggas up here shooting at each other. We got a war going on in Compton. And this is before Pop even died. This is at the park getting shot. So it was a hectic week. Uh, to say I remember exact things, no, it was all a blur, man. It was, it was a crazy time. It was a, uh, it was a crazy time. Man. Did you think after that, it, it was smart for Biggie to come six months later after Pop died? Well, the way they were, it was been portrayed like it was over and, and nothing was done. And, you know, a, a month later, everything had stopped. Shook in jail, and so. Uh, so you feeling safe now? You know, I, I always say, I don't know. I got to get the time dates on that when Steve Harvey and Snoop and Puffy goes on that show talking about yeah. it's all good. Yeah, I remember and, that. You know, like, yeah. Snoop, why can't you say it's all good, nigga? You didn't start this war. That's all Shook used to say. I know. Nigga, how you gonna stop a war? You you in a star? You ain't a part of it, nigga. Who who are you? That was funny to share, but I got to get the time. Like, I got to see when that show actually was taped, not aired, because we all know the shows get aired months. Get aired. I think it was aired after Biggie died. To be honest with you, but it probably was taped way before then. Yeah, I think it was aired. But that's why I said that's why I always use the word taped. I got to see when that, that was taped, because you know stuff started getting out and started hearing. But now you got to see what Puffy Head is. If it's before Biggie and them, you know, oh, okay, Snoop is saying it's all good. We, you know, it's squashed. And Shig said in jail. So, who else, you know, so, so that's, that's, you know, I think that gave him a false sense of security. People don't know, though. Biggie was out here two months prior to getting killed working it's all about timeline got to see what the timeline to see where puffy and all their heads were but you know now 25 26 years later the timeline get a little blur but i know those things happen it's just we're always mess up with his dates and stuff like that 
But you gotta remember, these are the things that's going through Puff here. Plus, he's trying to promote an album. You gotta promote on the on on in New York. You gotta promote in LA, and then you gotta go overseas and promote there. If not, you're not gonna have a successful project because that's where all your big media outlets are. You know, your MTVs, your BETs, your your Rolling Stone magazines, your Source magazines. And you needed all of those to promote an album back then. Now you can just go online and go yes, on YouTube. Man, yeah. go on. Yeah, or, but back then in the 90s, it was a different way of promoting and marketing. Some point you went to federal prison. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Mill Experience. Comment, like, and share. Comment, like, and share. Comment, like, and share.